In this tutorial we're going to be looking at random numbers in Scratch. Random numbers are an important part of any programming language. Uh, anytime you want to simulate anything that's real life or if you want to have a game where the elements of the game behave in a somewhat random manner, uh, a way you don't want everything to be predictable, well that's when you're going to use random numbers. Scratch provides for you a uh, random number generator. It's a little on the crude side, but it will do a, a lot of good things before you have to worry about its limitations. So first of all, you can see here we have the pick random 1 to 10. The values 1 and 10 you can edit. The, user or the programmer can edit those and change them. So if I just double click on this element by itself and do that a few times, 10, 7, 8, 2, 1, 4, 8. So I've repeated the number 8 and I had a bunch of other numbers in there. So it does appear to be random. So we can obviously do very simple things with this, which is we could have the cat say our random number for two seconds. And every time I click on that, the cat is going to say what one of those values is. That's not particularly interesting. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can take the result from a random number and we can save it in a variable and to be consistent with other types of um, program that we've, uh, that we've been doing I'm going to suggest that we that we uh, use every time we create a random number we use a variable to keep track of it so I'm going to say uh, the first one is going to be something that the cat is going to say so I'm going to have this thing called say random and this is a random number between 1 and 10 and so every time that I start this program I'm going to have this variable set to a number between 1 and 10 and then I'm going to have the cat say that variable for two seconds. Simple enough and then I will close off the that particular script. Now that's a that's one application of random numbers so every time I click on the flag the cat's going to say that number for two seconds and actually I think I'll reduce that down to one second just for the sake of time so we have and the random number you can see is appearing up here on the stage and its value is changing at the same time now what else can we do with random numbers well let's take a look at the stage itself so if I move the cat around on the stage you can see up here it gives me the X coordinate and the Y coordinate for the cat and the X coordinate seems to go from about negative 190 over to 190 so really it's about 200 and the Y coordinate goes from negative 129 up to positive 130 so negative 130 to positive 130 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new variable called one of them is going to be my random X and one of them is going to be my random Y and so what kind of values am I going to have for random X I believe we said that goes from about negative 200 to positive 200 and for our random Y we're going to go from negative 130 to positive 130 and I need to assign these to my variables so set random X to negative 200 to positive 200 set random y negative 130 to positive 130 now you might wonder well what am I going to do with these things I'm actually going to set the cat's position to uh, these values so here we go I'm going to set the x value to random x I'm going to set the y value to random y obviously and I'm going to put this all together into a little control block so when the flag is clicked I'm going to create my random value for X I'm going to create my random value for Y I'm going to set X to random X I'm going to set Y to random Y and then I'm going to pause at that location for uh, two seconds or actually one second because right up here I'm I'm saying something for one second so here I'll wait for one second and
and then I'll stop my script. So now when I click on the flag, the cat moves to a random location on the screen and because I've got both of these actual scripts running at the same time, then each of those actions is going to be executed at the same time. And I can speed up this process and have the cat really just bouncing around. And so you can start to see basically anywhere that you can set something for the, uh, for the cat, then you can uh, then you can put this into random numbers. Uh, one last thing I think I'll show you, as you can see there's lots of opportunities, lots of things with regards to the, the cat's costume, uh, the cat's size, you can do things with different sounds if you wanted to, you could change the sound to be something variable, you could, um, we've talked about motion, you can change the direction that the cat is looking, you could change how, how large the steps are that it's taking, you could uh, change how whether it's moving quickly or slowly. All of these things are things you can adjust with random variables. And I think the last thing I want to look at is actually um, this one, which is I'm going to I'm going to use the uh, show and hide controls because right now if I if I double click on hide, the cat disappears. If I double click on show, the cat appears. You might well, how am I going to? make use of random values to, to do that. So I'm going to make a variable called uh, is visible. Now something being visible, I don't need a whole lot of values for that. So my random value, something is either visible or invisible. So I'm going to set it to be, uh, these are traditional values for programming. So this one's just going to go between 0 and 1. So 0 will mean it's invisible or not visible and one will mean it's visible. And so I'm going to say set is visible to pick random and I'm going to create a program or create a script. So the first thing I do in this script is I set is visible and now I'm going to use a control statement. I'm going to say if, let's see it's actually going to be an if else. So if and I want to know if is visible is equal to so when should I show the cat well I should show the cat if is visible is equal to 1 and so if that's the case then I'm going to show the cat and if is visible is not 1 which would mean it's 0 then I'm gonna hide the cat and then at the end of that I will stop the script and so now I run this Actually, let me just run this one, if I double click on this. Sometimes the cat is invisible, sometimes it's visible. And if I run the whole thing, sometimes the cat's invisible, sometimes it becomes visible again. And it's becoming visible in random locations. Okay, so that's it for the tutorial on random numbers. I've shown you a number of possibilities here on what you can do with random numbers and you should introduce those into your programs and explore this.